Hey, it's Natalie with the Think Yourself Academy. Sometimes you're down. Sometimes you're not at your best. Sometimes you're just not feeling it. And usually it's happening in between your ears. Of course, sometimes it's our body that doesn't follow, but most times it's in our head. And most things that are holding us back are not only holding us back in our life, they are holding us back at work as well. So welcome back, Confidence at Work series, part two. As part of my audit, the second thing that we are evaluating in a business, if you were there in the first part, we were talking about how to increase confidence. Now we're going to be talking about the second piece. It's how to decrease negative self-talk, how to transform that negative self-talk, how to decrease the self-doubt and imposter syndrome that goes with it. So let's look into it. It's interesting that this week happens to also be the week of Father's Day. And this is one of the things that my father used to repeat to me over and over and over. He actually had me sitting down in the living room listening to Augmentino cassette tape. <laughs> I know it ages me. Some of you don't even know what a cassette is. So I was memorizing the lessons of this um, international bestseller, The Greatest Miracle uh, in the World. So Augmentino has four big lessons. And my father used to always repeat them to me. We were memorizing them together. And these four lessons just happen to apply very well in the context of how do we decrease our negative self-talk, our self-doubt, our imposter syndrome. So the very first part is know and count your blessings. So what are the things that you are grateful for? What are the things that you already have that you are thankful for? So listen to your own self-talk, identify exactly what is going on? What are you saying? Oh, I'm an imposter. I don't belong here. I'm not good enough. Or, or simply, I don't like my job right now. So count your blessings. What is good about it? What is good about you? What are you good at? So start by understanding the stages of learning. Because if you look into where you're at in the four stages of learning, that will give you an indication on, on how far are you from being comfortable with this new thing. Because usually when you feel like an imposter, when you have this negative self-talk, it's not in every area of your life. You are mostly a confident person most time. But in, with that new computer system, you're not liking it. Or with this specific person or with the new boss or with the VP or with this big client, you get intimidated. So understand where you are in your four stages of learning, because at the very beginning, when you start something new and because there's a lot of changes happening to us, we start with unconscious incompetence. So you're not good at it, but you don't even know that it exists. So before they installed this new computer system, it was not even a thing. And then you realize that the in, they brought in this new computer system and now you're still incompetent <laughs> you're still not good at it but you're at stage number two you are now consciously incompetent you know that it's a thing just like before this uh video today you may not have thought that you could change your negative self-talk now i'm telling you yes you can change that so now you know it's a thing you're still not good at it so you're at stage number two. Stage number three is conscious competence. That's kind of cool because now you know that it's a thing. You know how to do it. And I'll give you a few tricks. So you know how to change your negative self-talk. Step one, count your blessing. And then you might have to refer back to your cheat sheet and say, okay, uh, wait a minute. I have this negative self-talk. I'm feeling like an imposter. What do I do again? Oh yeah, that's right. Count my blessing. That's step number one. So you're consciously competent until you can become unconsciously competent. So you don't have to think about it. Just like sometimes you drive back home after work and you're like, oh, how did I get here? <laughs> okay, I wasn't even paying attention. Attention. 
things that you do every day, you don't even have to think about it. And it's competency at an unconscious level. You don't even have to think about it. So when you are facing imposter syndrome, try to identify, is this because you are going through the four stages of learning and you're not at the stage yet that you are comfortable and know that you will become comfortable because you will get to stage four eventually. You just need to keep at it and keep persevering. Next part of this, so the first part, count your blessing. Next part is claim your uniqueness, your superpower. There's something about you that is unique. There's something about you that skill, that um, that way that you have to do this thing that you're really good at that is unique to you. So work on those skills, work on those strengths and make your strength being used. So develop those skills, invest in professional development, attend workshops, training sessions, online courses, acquire all these new skills and the knowledge on, on how to boost your confidence or boost your confidence in that specific skill because this will definitely help you lower your imposter syndrome if you feel that you're not good enough and you don't belong there if you acquire the skill that you need in order to be comfortable with that. So it then identify also what you are already good at, not just the things you need to learn, but what you're already good at will give you that confidence in your own abilities. Next step in order to decrease your low self-esteem, negative self-talk, go the extra mile. High achievement. When we were talking about imposter syndrome, very often people that are perfectionist or people that are competitive and like to achieve really high, high standards, they are more prone to imposter syndrome because if they don't win, if they're not number one, they will feel very bad about themselves, even though number two was really, really good. And even though, let's say, you plan to exercise seven days a week, you go six days and then you feel like a loser. Well, six days a week is really good. But because of this high achievement, that that idea of perfectionism, that may have an influence on your confidence, on your negative self-talk. So go the extra mile. What I'm saying here is, do a little bit more than when you know you're capable of and compare yourself with yourself. Don't compare yourself with others. Compare yourself with yourself and know that high achievement and perfectionism can be a great thing in small doses. So do the extra mile. Do a little bit more than what is being asked. Do what you know you can do best and a little bit beyond. And if you reach that, you'll feel good about yourself because you do a little bit more than than what you know you're capable of. So you take yourself out of your comfort zone. And then the last piece that Ogmandino and my father uh, taught me was the last piece is use your power of choosing. Even if sometimes it's very tempting to choose um, the negative self-talk or to choose to go into self-sabotage or to go into I'm not good enough or whatever you do it then or to to, uh, pass the ball to somebody else at work right so it's very easy to just brush it off and say okay whatever instead choose how you want to think about it because your thoughts matter so choose to see what is happening as something good. Choose when you have even a failure of something that did not work so well. Choose to learn from it and to move forward. Choose enthusiasm instead of fear. If there's something that you don't know, just be enthusiastic because in your prefrontal cortex all emotions are created equally your brain doesn't know the difference between anxiety or excitement so be excited curious enthusiast at the task that is being presented to you and say oh i wonder 
how I'm going to get better at this. I wonder when I'm going to reach my fourth level and the fourth stage of learning. Uh, be curious. What am I learning from this? In a year from now, I will be really good at this. So I wonder how I will look back at this event here or this challenge and think, oh my gosh, I totally nailed it. I am really good at that. So use wisely your power of choosing. So happy Father's Day, everybody. And remember to count your blessings, claim your uniqueness, go the extra mile and use your power of choosing.